right, I'll go ahead and call this meeting to order at this time. Uh, thank you, Mr. President. Yes. Father God, we thank you for this meeting we've got to come into today, Lord, and we ask you to give us strength and give us wisdom to know what to do in the city of Hartford and the people of Hartford, Lord. Lead their minds and touch them today, Lord. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. All right. Uh, we've got two visitors. Would you all like to address the council tonight? I work for the uh, Interpacks. Do what? We're here for the Interpacks. Oh, okay. <laughs> We don't serve. Uh, we, we do reserve the right to make comments every few minutes. That's fine. That's fine. All right, we'll take a look at our minutes from our last meeting, the May twenty third meeting. Um, have time to look those over. Whenever you get them looked over, I'll entertain a motion to accept those minutes. survey plat from Glenn Miller from when Glenn developed his um, apartments down here off Clay Street several years ago and he had it platted and surveyed out in 2009 for what he named the uh, Earl Russell Court was the name of the street where he built his apartments and on the plat he dedicated all streets alleys walks in that little subdivision to the city as a public right-of-way well, Mr. Miller happened to also be the county or the city attorney at the time, and he said you're, sometimes you're your own worst client. He forgot to bring it up to the city council and make sure that they <laughs> accepted okay. that street into the uh, city street index. So um, I pulled the statute on that. Really, once it's made dedication in public records like that, it tends to be part of the city if it's opened up to the public after five years. But there's also a recommendation here that the mayor sign off on it or be adopted by ordinance. Um, and I think that's what he would like to do, is go ahead and have the city officially adopt it so he can say it is a city street subject to public services. Okay. So I can draft an ordinance for the next meeting, if that's what you all wish to do. I didn't get a chance to draft it before this one. All right. The other options are... On this, we're well... Better, we're better off it's been for ordinance. Yeah, well... I would probably, because it does, it does necessarily make reference to um, adoption by ordinance, though I do think that it could be by uh, general use by the public over time. I mean, it's kind of one or the other. It may be such a fact that had this been presented to you back on the survey plot, it, said it does make provision that the mayor could just sign and approve the map and have it recorded. So I'll ask Mr. Miller if he prefers um, a quicker and easier way would just be a resolution recognizing it. And uh, if that's what he prefers, then I'll bring that to the council. So well, we've got some kind of a record here in the office of, of that uh, easement. Or right. And what he would like, though, is at least something on tonight's record where the council would approve to go ahead and accept that so that he can... What's really the name of it? Earl Russell Court. Everybody know what we're talking about? Yes. Uh -huh. yeah. Before you get to the health department on the... If, as you're going out Clay Street, those apartments on the right-hand side okay. across from East Hartford Church. Okay. But those are the ones that we're talking about. Okay. There's a sale now. <laughs> huh? Somebody got them up for sale. 
He does, I guess. Yeah, better yeah, get this taken care of. <laughs> he'd like for the, that's why he'd like something on tonight's record if, if, uh, the, if the council would make a motion and adopt that as part of the city right. That way, at least it's in the minutes. Okay. All right. Is, uh, will somebody make that motion then? I'll make the motion that we name uh, that little court the Earl Russell Court. Adopt it into the city as a city street. That's what it is, to make it a city street. Oh, okay, to make it a city street. Yeah. Second. Second. All right, any discussion? Is there any additional costs associated with drainage? Because there's a lot of stuff going on there. I believe he had it curved and it's he already did. on city okay. sewer. Uh, my understanding is the city has actually been uh, plowing it for snow and, and treating it similar to mm -hmm. a city street for the last yeah. several years. It's yeah. just never been as long as there's not a major infrastructure issue. It would need to be addressed. No worse than any of the others. <laughs> no worse than <laughs> we don't any more. I don't think it is because actually that original plant, he, he was going to double the number yeah. okay. that he had out there. I will say, I mean, he, he did it right when he did it. Yeah. Him, okay. So. Yeah, because there's plenty of room for more uh, apartments yeah. to be put in there. So. And th they're handicap accessible. Well, except for the first building that he built that and then realized that he didn't. But the rest of them are. So. Okay. All right, then. All in favor of the motion, signify the uplifted hand. Thank you. All, no opposition. All right. Anything else you have for us? Not right now. Okay. Tell Glenn that's just one more thing. He's indebted to me. <laughs> All right. Uh, take a look at our financial statements then at this time. Have any questions about uh, the bank balances are kind of a fooler. Mm -hmm. That's what they were at that particular day. We've since used a lot of money out of those accounts, so there's nothing like those totals right now. But. And the rest of the financials. Do you have any questions about any of those? It's getting that time of the year when it starts to become crunch time for us regarding revenues and expenses. levying ad valorem taxes for general municipal purposes for the fiscal year of January 1, 2019 through December 31st, 2019 on all taxable property within taxing jurisdiction of the City of Hartford on each $100 of the fiscal year 2019 assessed valuation as follows. On real property 
$40.9 cents. Tangible and personal property, $29.25. Motor and watercraft, $22.8 cents. Including real and personal property of public service companies. Okay, then. I entertain a motion to adopt this ordinance. I make the motion. Okay. Second. All right. Tell me a second. Is there any discussion regarding this? No, in my taxes, I have no discussion. Okay. <laughs> I know whenever I mention this to people that were lowering our taxes, you get quite a shocked look on people's faces. <laughs> yeah. So it's kind of unheard of, but I think it's a step mm -hmm. in the right direction for us. Mr. Mayor, may I make a comment? Yes, go ahead. Lisa and I, what, four years ago, five years ago, went to Grad and talked to him about lowering taxes. And his response was, What, Lisa? He had never had anybody come yeah. talk to him about lowering taxes. Wow. Never. In the history of the years he's worked there, so should make us a little more acceptable to businesses that want to come locate in Hartford, hopefully, and residents. I hope. Oh yeah, <laughs> uh, most of them won't realize it. They still complain. <laughs> All those in favor of accepting this motion to adopt this ordinance, I put your hand. Thank you. Motion's carried to be asked. All right. The next item of business is adoption. Uh, this is the second reading. In it. Yeah. All these are second readings. Adoption of the ordinance 29-04 regarding the golf carts. So, uh, can you all read yeah. that report, please? City of Hartner, Hartford Ordinance 2019-04, an ordinance to amend portions of the ordinance number 2011-09 regarding the regulation and operation of golf carts on designated city streets to comply with the KRS 189.286, as well as to amend both ordinances number 2011-09 and ATV ordinance number 2016-06 to establish that permits w will expire July 1st of each year. All right. Motion to adopt this ordinance. Make a motion we adopt this ordinance. All right. For a second. That's it. All right. Any discussion regarding this? Of course, all we're doing is bringing our ordinance in line with the actual state regulations, state revised statutes. So, any other discussion? All in favor of adopting the ordinance, so put your hand. Thank you, motions unanimous. Carried. And finally, ordinance 2019-05. Second reading for that. Tony, I'll read that one for us. An or <coughs> ordinance imposing parking restrictions on portions of Center Street in downtown Hartford for the convenience and safety of citizens. Okay. Uh, motion to adopt this ordinance. Make the Mary motion. Bell, second. Tony. All right. Discussion regarding this one. Now, is this this side of uh, Main Street or on the other side? Or? It's, most, it's both sides, both actually, side. of it. Uh, as far as enforcing it, we almost have to wait until this other parking lot becomes available. And then also the one down behind. You know, uh, you go around the courthouse and, you know, it's tight squeeze getting through there sometimes the way they yeah. on both sides. Well, what this, is, this, this lot will open up, will remove a lot of the parking from people who work in the courthouse. Well, They'll be able to get off the street. And then the others down on West Center Street will have we're trying to work out a deal for the parking lot behind the Christian Healthcare, whatever that is now. It's where they'll want to be there. We're working on a deal there to try to make that accessible to those people who are parking on West Center right now. So as soon as we get these two lots uh, finalized, I mean, we've, we've taken a bunch of bricks out of these buildings over here on the corner and they were supposed to have been torn down a week or so ago, but uh, 
rain and everything, I guess, has delayed that. City workers taking it down? Pardon? Is the city workers taking it down? No. Uh, we, we took the bricks out for our use on, on Main Street in the sidewalk project. Oh, okay. But the county is actually taking it down. Now, we will help them to some extent. Okay. Uh, we're hauling off some of the debris down at the lagoons for them, so to help fill in the lagoons as well. But a lot of it will stay right there in the basement to fill it up. Hmm. All right. Any other discussion regarding this one? It does create one 15-minute parking space next to the corner right there at West Union and Main Street. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right, all in favor of adopting that ordinance, uplifted hand. Thank you. Motion is carried unanimously. All right. Uh, under new business, I have two uh, new appointees to the planning and zoning. I want to appoint Wilda to the commission and Robbie Ayer to the board of adjustments. Uh, we'll take those one at a time. Uh, I need a motion to accept Will DePocket as a Hartford representative on the Planning and Zoning Commission. I make the motion. Okay. Second? Second. All right. David. Any questions or comments? Discussion? Yeah, that's good. I think she'll be good on that. Yeah. Okay. If there's none, then all in favor of accepting her. Thank you. Motion carried. And then the Board of Adjustments, Robbie Ayer, uh, need a motion for that. Okay, David. Second. Second. Okay, Jerry. Any discussion there? You know, everybody know Robbie. It's Ann, Doctor Ann Ayer's husband. Yeah. Okay. I don't know him, but uh, yeah. Know. All right. Any more discussion? All right. All in favor, up lift your hand. Thank you. Motion carried. All right. And now we come to. Uh, Downtown parking. All right. Uh, you know, <laughs> downtown parking. You want to discuss anything? I think that's why they're here. Okay. Pardon. The ordinance, the ordinance you just voted on is the, the one thing that we were concerned about. Uh, and I do want to make a correction. It's not. West Union and Maine, it's center of Maine and the territory. I mean, West, yeah, yeah West Union yeah. is. I, I just didn't want anybody to be. Right, West Center. It's left. Right here. Okay. I mean, I, and we all know that the streets are tore up, but, or not streets, but the sidewalks tore up, and people are being displaced on parking. But, you know, we've got, you know, we've opened up. Claudia's got her shop down there. We're just, we like to be able to have places for patrons to park. Uh, we are fortunate, both of our business comes from the people that's already downtown. But, uh, but, you know, again, as, as I mentioned, I think, in the meeting I went to before this, we've always wanted to see Hartford bring business in, get revitalized. It's one of the reasons why you just pass the orders to lower taxes. But sometimes you got to be careful what you ask for, you might get it. And in co because of that, consequences come, like parking being an issue. I would like to see the police police it in some regard, yeah. uh, not just for parking, but for proper use of our streets. Every day you can stand down there and watch. The number of cars that are going the wrong way on the one way, mm -hmm. coming up Center Street, running the red light, going on out. Uh, you know, I, for years when I owned it, when I was both an employee and an owner of King Drugs, it, it constantly happened. We're very fortunate nobody's really got bad work. But I think enforcing and policing the parking is an issue, and making sure people are going up and down on thoroughfares properly is also an issue. Uh, and I also, while we're on that subject, is there plans to? Resurface Center Street when all this is done because you got a spot down there. The length, at least the length of that table and that, that wide of breadth, also, where I guess the sewer water lines were broke and had to redo that. Yeah, they're, they're going to have to, uh, the contractor will have to resurface that. I don't know, I imagine they'll probably fill it in with concrete once, okay. once they. No, I'm not talking about the cut cross, I'm not talking about the crosswalk. Okay. So on Center Street, you got the crosswalk where you had the power run from one block to the next. Right. 
then years later, uh, years a couple three years ago, when we laid when we did all that on the side there, there's been black cop there and rock but there, and then under by uh, where your office is, uh, is it your office down there, it's, uh, down there where Dr. Uh, Stewart's home used to be. There's a good good sized place there that the city I guess tore up. So Center Street is pretty well tore up from front all the way to one is end that, to the other. That's in the sidewalk though, isn't it? Down there to hub. No, it's in the middle of the road. Or is it out in the street? Oh, yeah. I know where you're talking about. Over on the, the side toward the parking lot, the big parking lot. So, I mean, you've got... Yeah. So, I mean, so basically the whole roads tore up. So, I mean... They were just We all don't know that they're working on it, but at some point, is it going to be resurfaced? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. We've got money to do that. But that, that little strip right there where they took the utilities across from block to block, that that be the contractor to do that. I mean, yeah, I respect that. We'll have, to do, we'll have to do that. Because of all the patching and everything been done, I didn't know if it would be appropriate. Once they get that done to resurface the center street, I'll yeah. have to there. was there anything else along that we needed to, to think about? You all had mentioned parking being uh, an issue. Huh, I mean, parking is an issue. I mean, uh, the hospital, I've talked to the director at the hospital. I mean, I work with her. They're trying to displace me and their employees on the other side as possible or at the lower lot. Right. Uh, Tara and I both spoke with Steve Wiggins, and I think Tara's still working on drafting something. Is that correct? Been a little busy, but yeah. <laughs> but I think once these, once these two parking lots are useful, you know, for That'll help. Yes. then we'll be able to... But don't forget, and I checked where Pro Care Home Health had been closed, or Christian Care. Yeah. Now Care Tenders is reoccupying the building. They've got several employees in that building, so that parking lot may or may not be quite as. Well, they've got quite a few places up under the yeah. back. Yes. Back to see it there. I think there's probably at least 30 to 40 places that are going to be available if we can ever get that worked out right there, which will. And, and uh, something else that would help. Is when all this is done, is if parking spots can be restriped because people really don't know. It's on the it's on the on the agenda. Work, work for the first next week if it's done right. And don't forget, also on the other side of where Old Commonwealth Community Bank used to be on Washington. Yeah, we're we'll just going to try to get all of Main Street where there is parking locations. Like that, we've got a striped Capers lot. I keep referring to it as Capers lot, lot next it's, to Capers. It's a city's lot. It right? could be Lycan's <laughs> lot. You know. <laughs> I will bring up on the subject, yeah. since it's on the subject of parking, and he brought up parking enforcement and things of that nature. I don't know if several of you heard, but there was a um, court of appeals out of Michigan, which is our, it's our federal circuit, that uh, ruled that chalking tires is unconstitutional. That what? That chalking tires is unconstitutional. Oh. Invade your privacy. Now, whether I agree with that or not is moot, because I don't sit on the federal court of appeals, but... <laughs> Um, so there's been a lot of question lately about what municipalities in our particular circuit is going to do to enforce parking. Um, and I think right now the primary ways that most cities are looking at is either parking meters or uh, taking pictures. Let's get the parking meters. Yeah. Or, but, I mean, honestly, they, um, taking a picture and documenting when the picture was taken and looking, I mean, it's pretty easy to see when a car, whether they've moved or not, according to the picture. Uh, so, if there if there are any questions regarding enforcement of that, that probably would be the primary, more uh, I guess, constitutional at the moment way of doing that. Can I bring up another parking thing? Well, it's not a parking; it's a drag. When did we cut off access to the post office? Cut off access to the post office. Yeah, there is a sign right as you turn in. To go to the post office, okay. or where I turn in to go to the post office, between there and Off the coffee time. shop, uh, there's a little sign, and there's two little signs. One of them says, "One way, do not enter," and they're not very big. They're not as big as the stop oh, sign. It's, it's the they're trying to put in a drive-through for the cop cafe. It's wide enough right there that you can have two lanes of enter and exit you also have a one way lane next to Copper Cafe yeah well it says you can enter there you just can't enter on the bottom side of the Copper Cafe 
You what now? <laughs> I'm not picturing. But you know you. where the post office is. Yes, ma'am, I do. And I've then there's a I, wide I, entrance, and you know, people just drive every which direction. That's right. Okay, that's where I'm talking about. That's parking lot rules. And the there. green on 231 in front of the post office says, do not enter. It's one, one way. lane right next to Coffee Cafe where they're trying to. No, it's on um, no, the green. The it's, you don't, it's, enter, that you don't right. enter that at all. Did the city you enter up? on the one way street going that way on the other side of Coffee Cafe. It says dinner over there. Did, did the city put up the signs? That's, what I'm saying. Uh, That's a private lot. Right. But, well, regardless of what you do, Make the sign big enough for even the old people to see. I'm talking about little bitty. The city didn't put up the, the sign. And as I was driving in, I thought, oh, that's it. What am I doing? And you passed going the wrong way. I was going to the post. I office. think what they're trying to do is develop a travel pattern coming in on the Beaverdam side of Coffee Cafe and going around. Who the is trying? They are the creating a drive. Drive there. They're, they're creating a drive through. Yeah. So? That's but they're mean. trying to create around their property there. Well, that's fine. Okay. Why can't I enter there by the post office? <laughs> you can. No, you can't. It says, do not enter. <laughs> I, you want to see a picture of it? <laughs> <laughs> I'm I'm ready. Right by there. <laughs> okay. Yes, and but it says do enter on the one way. Well, if they're trying to develop that, I wouldn't want everybody pulling in there that comes in there. No, that's just for Copper Cafe traffic. Well, it certainly doesn't say that because it's the same little red sign. Okay. You know, if the city did, it would be a great big white sign. Well, I would <laughs> hope so. Well, who did it then? It's a private lot. That's a Hayward lot. Yeah. That's that's well, I can't call Hayward as we all know. I say Glenn put it up to try to... Develop a pattern, traffic pattern around Papa Cafe. Well, he's going to cut the post office off, so it doesn't matter to me if you don't want the post office anymore in Harper's. They're looking for excuses to close them anyway. Maybe the city can recommend they strike that area. Yeah. For the elderly. Yeah. <laughs> well, it's not just the elderly. I mean, you know, it's like it's like Dodge Dart when you go in there anyway. You've got to look every which way behind you. Yeah. But but that's not helping. I mean, you put up a damn sign. We can, we can, we can do some striping there to help alleviate that problem, I think. So. What can I order out of my screwdriver to take this out there? No, can't do that. That's, a, that's called vandalism. That's all right. you need your golf cart. You just cut that's it right. the yard. That's the way I do. Uh -oh. Go across the yard. Man. But it, Karen's the one that called me, and I went down here, and I thought, well, dang, she does know what she's talking about. <laughs> and, I, and I've been pulling in and out there just to see. And I'm going to go down and sit and see how many people pay attention to it. Okay. Not very many that I've seen so far. Not too many pay attention to stop signs. <laughs> any I brought it to your attention. Thank you. <laughs> okay. Sure. All right. I recognize Claudia too. <laughs> I, I sent Glenn, I mean, Sean. Sean, yeah, I got so many name, names on my hand. Sean was here earlier, and I didn't know that there was going to be a meeting tonight uh, of you all to come and do this, but you can go ahead and, and talk about what you all have discussed and ideas that you've got. Well, and what, what what's in regard to, because some of these may not know what I know. Okay. Uh, well, it, mainly we want to get started early and not be um, with the Hartford Festival, which we are potentially renaming the Soreheads Festival. Okay. But we want to do more to draw little ones and uh, to tell any of you a little bit about myself. I do pottery and teach classes at the Pottery Guild, so we just want to. I've done a little bit of some. But I just want to help out, and uh, he and I have just talked briefly over the phone, and we want to meet to get together. And my babysitter is on their way to East Tennessee, <laughs> so I had to bring him along with me. That's no problem. Um, but anyway, yeah. So uh, we just know that you know we have the date on the calendar for the first weekend of October, but um, it seems yeah. fast. So I'm be what, talking more. What she's yeah. talking about is that. Uh, We've had some interest from 
uh, Sean Lynn, who had the Lynn Jackson store right down here on, you know, right next to the real estate business, okay? He came in, we talked about the Harvest Festival, what we used to call the Harvest Festival. Claudia has volunteered to work with him, so we've got two people now the starting of a group of committee to uh, put this festival together, and the decision was made to just change the name of it to the Sorehead Festival and try to, you know, bank on that idea, try to build up, you know, some Sorehead. Uh, Yeah. Interest. Right. Yeah. It's branding. I mean, it's, it's going to actually beyond that <laughs> sore head, the yeah. idea yeah. that we social talked about. Pardon? The word more via social media and have just consistent branding. Yes. Um, so that's one of our goals, for sure. The other, I mean, EDC, when we discussed this, I mean, you know, we kept we thought, kept throwing names out, and the one name was that. We kept, and they brought it to, I think it was actually Mary Bella brought it, maybe I was wrong, said the name of the Sorghum Festival because that is unique to the city of Hartford. Right. You know, I mean, so it's, so I think it was what the Sorghead, the Sorghead Festival at Hartford or something along that line, I forget exactly the terminology that we came up with, but something along that line. You remember Mary Bella? Something along that line. Sorghead Festival, I thought. Sorry. But it's just an attempt to build on this brand to try to incorporate not only with this festival, but they even talked about recognizing businesses on a periodic basis and uh, coming up with a a sore head image mm -hmm. model three dimensional uh, and so we're they're going to offer some type of a contest uh, to try you know, to get the character that to get some people's ideas about what a sore head looks like. Uh, David Coleman was the mm. leading. <laughs> <laughs> I'll take that. I thought we were just looking at Mary Bell's picture. <laughs> going down the wrong way. <laughs> yeah, going down the wrong way. <laughs> With a screwdriver. There you go. <laughs> but seriously, though, they're trying to we're just decide this is something that Hartford is associated with. Let's just run with it and try to generate uh, some image, you know, that would be conducive to building uh, just a camaraderie among the citizens uh, you know helping us just kind of unite behind something so I think it's a good idea and so uh, Claudia and Sean are bouncing ideas off each other Sean's wife is contributing to this as well and so they're coming up with a lot of ideas that We'll try to appeal to most people. And of course, we're still going with the Merchants Festival in November. And Alma's going to take care of that. I talked to her about doing this, but I don't think she can do both. That's just too much planning. So, Are you uh, still planning on the new festival? Is it going to be the two-day? Yeah. The Friday and Saturday? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So anyway, that's what's in the works, and we're here to try to promote that. If you've got anything else you want to add, then you can be excused if you want to take a little bit <laughs> home. He's calmed down. He's calmed down now, so. <laughs> All right. Uh, anybody have anything you want to bring up? I've got just a report. Uh, we've got a change order to the work, the sidewalk project. Uh, it's a change order in our benefit this time. We've cut out part of the project uh, and it ended up saving us $15,357.44. So that's a nice bit of change order yeah. news. What was changed? What was cut out? Well, we had the sidewalk going all the way down past the the sewage treatment plant's pump down here, the last one. And while they were down there working, 
uh, Kevin came up from the wastewater plant and said, you're putting a sidewalk over one of our major lines, and it was running with the line. And so if they had any problems, we're going to have to tear the sidewalk up. So I said, and it wasn't lining up with what we hoped to be the sidewalk going down to the side of 69 all the way to the to the ramp down there. Okay. So I said, well, why don't we just stop it right here, right now. There was a, uh, they put in a storm drain that was on the schedule, so they went ahead and did that. But what we're going to have to end up doing is where they are now to avoid that pipe. We stopped about three feet short of the manhole. And what they'll end up doing is going, making an angle over, and then they'll be lined up with what will hopefully be the sidewalk all the way down the Trail Town project sidewalk all the way down to the boat ramp. Uh, but we had to wait there until Highway Department builds us out a shoulder for the sidewalk. To, right now, it was going down through the edge of the uh, bean field, and so yeah. that wasn't working. So. Yeah, that's real low there. It's going yeah. to build up a lot. we got to wait till the shoulder's built out there, and then we can go ahead and then do a sidewalk from where it ended up. So it saved, it saved some money there. Of course, they had to redo a, oh, an entrance ramp over here, right across, uh, well, in front of the lawyer's offices down there. You know, yeah, uh, yeah, right, out, almost that alley right in that area. Mm -hmm. There's a side, there was an entryway goes up. It looks like a driveway to that house, but it's not. It's an alleyway. Mm -hmm. and when it was initially put in, poured, it was too steep an angle, and people that were trying to go up it were dragging, dragging everything underneath the car. You know, transmission differential, and everything. So they went in. We took took that out and just made us just a straight ramp now to make it up that driveway because people were using it to get into parking, you know, houses right there on that uh, West Union. But it, the sidewalk now goes up and then you have to walk on the ramp and then get back on the sidewalk again. So it created maybe a little problem there, but okay. there's no way it, it could be dealt with. It was just too steep coming off the street to keep the sidewalk there. So anyway, that, those two things were removed from the project and then just poured another concrete there, which wasn't too big a deal for us. Okay, makes sense. I've asked the contractors to look at the side the twice as nice on the side next to toward Brand, uh, Brandon Thomas's service station on that side right there. I've asked them to give me a price on putting in a four-foot sidewalk because it's, it's terrible right now. I mean, it's broken up and everything. <coughs> to put a four-foot sidewalk there and then concrete down to the edge of the pavement and that way we can create about four or five angle parking spaces for the twice as nice there that should help their situation, parking situation. Mr. Mayor, I'm going to, on the subject of that sidewalk, I'd like to commend the city workers with Jason and his crew for some folks who've never laid pavers before. I think it looks really nice downtown yeah. as they've done. Yeah. It, it really yeah. enhances the look. It looks, it looks extremely nice. I mean, they have never laid stone before, and it looks, it looks nice. And we're really not finished because we've got to put some the polymeric sand in there to seal it, you know, and make it a much more resistant to water. Uh, sitting in there, so we still got that little bit to do. May I comment along? Yeah, go ahead. Uh, yesterday I came up to see you, and I think you were listening for training. Right. Did you get the envelope letter? I did. Okay. Uh, that was out of courtesy. I did not. I know. I want you to understand that. Tara and I are partners on more properties. We own three pieces of property in downtown Hartford. Her law office. The 230 Main Street, which is El Citizens Bank, and then two doors down is 226 Main. And since the sidewalk work has been done, jackhammering the, the sidewalks that have been more than the new sidewalks, we've had considerable water coming in 226 Main. Uh, and uh, 230 Main, where the old bank is, 
had water coming in, particularly after the first flat tire, the uh, sidewalks were laid. We addressed it with the mayor and we addressed it with the contractor. They went in there and they put MP1 sealers because a lot of, there was a lot of cracks between the sidewalks and the walls. The bank building does not have active water. I haven't been down there today after last night's rain. It does not have active water coming in anymore. It still has moisture coming in. But that bank building is 110 years old. And anybody's welcome to talk to anybody that's ever been associated with the bank. It has never had water in that bank building at all. None. Zero. I think he's planning, Blake's planning on bringing fans to put down in your basement. To help dry things out. To force moisture out the back door there tomorrow. I think that's when he's planning to do that. So we have still moisture. 226, we still have active water coming in. And, you know, we're talking about old buildings, and we're talking about buildings now that Terry and I have invested quite a bit of money in renovating. Our concern is that, that if the water doesn't get stopped, it could structurally cause damage to our building, not alone, let alone mold and mildew. Right. Uh, we forwarded three letters, one to the mayor, one to uh, Mr. Wynn, Blake Winstead with uh, KMAC Contracting, and one to David Howe, the bill engineer. Uh, I'm going to go on record to say that you know, I sat on the council, we voted for the uh, sidewalk grant. Uh, the city's acting on our wishes. We contracted with an engineer to design it, and then we contracted with a contractor to do the sidewalk grant. You know, but we did have to put everybody aware that we are having issues. So uh, there's no mouse on our behalf other than we want our basements dried out and we want the water to stop. And to be honest with you, I feel like it is the engineer's responsibility, uh, either oversight on their behalf, and, and to remediate and to fix the problem. But I do feel like it was important that I, you, we let you be aware and I want the council to be aware that it is a concern on our behalf. I think where we're headed right now from the way the discussion has been is for uh, those those two planter boxes in front of the bank in front of 226. I think they're going to go ahead and just right now it looks like we're going to just put bottom in them and put brick in them like the, the other sections down through there. Uh, it may be that to try to maintain some, you know, some greenery, they may, we may try to get some concrete planters to set on those, you know, just plant flowers in or something like that. But that appears to be where it's headed right now. So, I mean, they're going to keep, we're going to do whatever it takes to try to Stop, stop the water flow. The, I think the water flow 226 is coming in where the coal sheet was. Yeah, I, I think I showed you pictures. Of, yeah. was, water was actually coming in all, all the way along the front wall. Uh, since they've done some work and the paper's been put in and the caulking has been done, uh, I've got pictures where there's obviously water in the floor, but we've got where the where the uh, coal sheet was at. You can see where the water is seeping through uh, through that section right there. So. Uh, I can tell you the water infiltration is still there. It is not as bad as it was the first time or two. But unfortunately, any water is it's not good. We have quite a bit of mold, and there's some rot yeah. going on with the base of our steps and, and that plate down there a little bit too. But, yeah. And I want to reiterate, the bank, again, you can talk to anybody associated with the bank, it's never had any moisture. 226, only place that 226 ever had water come in was in the back where the steps were. Of course, that's our responsibility for our courtyard. We fix that. Uh, this water is coming from the front. Is that 226? Has it got a basement in that too? Yeah. Um, Everything else has got a basement until you get to Jerry's. And that was something that was a little alarming is that the engineer made a statement that they weren't aware that there were basements in these buildings. With all due respect, I would think that would be an important right. point that should not have been missed. Sure, we weren't aware of any coal. <laughs> no. Uh, no. They caught them off, off guard because that wasn't expected, you know. To I know they got a sealer. Me and my brother's a contractor in Georgia, and we use sealer when I go down there and get them to seal the basements. They got a sealer that you can put in there, and it'll keep that water from coming. But are off. they putting on the inside or the outside? They got, a, they got a foam that they put in there, and then they come back and seal it. And everything in that water. Yeah, I'll but find if, it's on, out. if it's on the inside, though, it's not going to help. No. Well, I mean, what it's doing is keeping it from that moisture coming through the walls, right? And stuff. But it's it's still 
affecting those blocks that are right. the Trump Foundation was still affecting. I'm ho- I was hoping that there would be some more sealing they could do along. Right. Right. You know, there are still, if they look, there are kind of tearing up both those. The MP rule, it's a self leveling caulk, and, right. and there are still voids. And with the rains that we've had, some of these rains have been driving rains. So that water is being pushed in these, these crevices. So, you know, I'm not sure what the point of entrance is. I'm sure some of the flower beds, some may still be coming to these weed holes, and some of them may be going through these cracks. They'll keep working until they get it done. Um, they'll get it right. We need to talk about some funds. Oh. Okay, thank you. I told you about the change order. Uh, I don't have a copy of it. We sent it back in, didn't we? The copy of it? Okay. Yeah, just need a motion to accept the change order. Are you... Are you in favor of the reduction of fifteen thousand and some odd dollars on our behalf? <laughs> I got a motion and a second. All right. All in favor of accepting the change order, thank you. Okay. Um I'm thinking about how we can explain the years of borrowing from one fund to pay another fund's problem. Over the years, we've got three funds that generate money, and that's sanitation, water, and, and uh, sewer. Okay, those are the only ones that generate funds other than general funds. But we've got other accounts, like cemetery account, and the uh, fire department, the police department, the things, maintenance. Those, those, those accounts are not, they don't generate funds. So they get their money out of general fund. But what happens is, we, for years, they would take money from a fund that had some money like sewer, and use it to pay maybe water, or use it to pay fire, or something like that. So you've got all these funds that have loaned other funds money. And it's amounted to almost, well, it's well over a million dollars time you count them all together, right? Uh, it's a million seven just for the general fund. Uh, okay, I mean it's, it's just it's just a matter of bookkeeping, you know, from one of our fund sources to another fund that needed sources. Well, what it does to an auditor, to a CPA, they look at this and they say, okay, this fund has got money owed to it from another fund, so it looks like account receivable. It looks like an asset. This one over here has got the liability. And it creates, I mean, it's just, it's an accounting nightmare to me, really, is what it is. But that's the way they handle it. I'm glad I'm not an accountant, okay. <laughs> but anyway. What the accountant was, re- you want to tell them the accountant's recommending that over over a period of up to years even, that we gradually dissolve some of those, because it's our money anyway, mm-hmm. that we gradually dissolve those and put them back on even kill and we quit talking about loaning money from one account to another account, we just simply transfer it. Okay. That makes sense. All right. Uh, a lot of money has come out of occupational tax with the intent to pay it back. The problem is water doesn't generate the revenue to pay back. You know, sewer at times doesn't have, I mean, we've got to borrow to pay sewer bills, so sewer doesn't generate enough money over 
to pay it back. So he's recommending what we do is just over a period of time just gradually get rid of these loans here and there so that we eventually get back to just talk about transferring of funds and not talk about loaning our funds. Because if you loan it, the account says you got to pay it back. All right. Now, you go ahead and explain. <laughs> I've explained all I know about it. Okay. Well, look, going forward, un unless a council member truly wants a loan, then in their motion they can't say that they want it to be for occupational tax to loan the money to the general fund unless you're truly wanting it as a loan. The numbers have grown so exponential in all the others even before occupational tax comes along that it is it's a huge number. And um, water, sewer, and sanitation, if it, it was just those three and you were working massage between those, but those are enterprise funds, that'd be okay. But it's not because we have used $1.7 million of general fund since the books have started of general fund money to pay two other funds. Occupational taxes used roughly almost $500,000 to assist other accounts, but that account was set up that that can only be done with a motion from the council. So when council members have made motions for loans, those loans are on the books as loans. If they loan the money to water, water hasn't, since my tenure, ever had the funds to be able to pay back. So if the loan is not truly a loan and needs to be forgiven, then we would have to have a motion to forgive that loan. But the loans are to such extent um, that you cannot, you would not want to do this over even a five-year period. You would want to do this gradually. Um, if you just did the occupational tax, it was 480, I think $4,000 that has been loaned out. So what that means is if you were looking at the balance sheet of occupational tax, they have a receivable of 480 some thousand dollars. So to take that out, immediately will fall down to the bottom line. Now, if those funds could pay that back, we wouldn't be having this discussion. Right. But uh, I think everyone here has been here long enough to know that I don't foresee that water will have the ability to ever pay back occupational tax. Part of the money was is actually for things that the water needed. Some of the money was borrowed actually just to get through payroll until we got to the next property tax budget. <coughs> but it has become an issue with the auditors to the point that they're asking us to find a remedy, either to pay back, which is simple for them to say, or to forgive the loans. And this didn't happen overnight. This has been going on for years and years and years. So, I mean, it's not... That, that's one side. The other side, though, to make some, I'm sure, I'm sure everyone understands, it's not just the council that made the motions for loans. There's also the day-to-day -day activity. I've never been given authorization that if I if it, if we're trying to pay bills and we cannot pay those bills, then it's been always customary that I would go out and I would go to the fund that had the most funds, and I would transfer those funds into the account that was needed. That would be set up on the books as a loan because I don't have authorization just to transfer it from one to the other. At least there's, that's never in the minutes. I'm not sure if that's what you want. I'm just saying that is the way that this has happened. This happened two ways. One, from council members making motions of setting loans up on the books. Two, from the day-to-day -day business in order to get the bills paid. In the past... Uh, there's been the need or the step was taken to borrow money to borrow you know a hundred thousand dollars from the bank to make payroll things like that mm -hmm. uh, last year and uh, we didn't have to do it because we, t we took money from occupational tax the loan right. from occupational tax <coughs> and this year be the same thing you know that Right now, we're getting to the point where 
the property taxes that we raised back in October, November, you know, it gets pretty well depleted. The only thing we've got coming in on a regular basis is occupational tax and then the insurance premiums. Those are the major things that we have coming in. But they won't come in until the end of July, so. It seems to me that there's an imbalance in the um, operating expense for those accounts. Like, are we, do we have the right things in those accounts? Are we putting expenses against those? Like, if payroll is something that these accounts can't handle, then why isn't payroll just being paid out of the general fund? Well, it's, it's divided up. Always. Like, everybody who works in water is paid out of the water account. Yeah. Everybody who works in sewer is paid out of the sewer account. But I'm challenging if the way that we're running the city is, does, does that make sense? Because if we're having to borrow money because of we have too much expense here and it's not generating enough revenue, maybe shifting some of the way that we're booking those yeah. expenses would at least get it to a point to where it's going to be slower. It's going to take more time to do it, but it would you know you'd start to build fund in those accounts and then they they could then pay the loans. I, I guess if you're looking, if we just look at water, uh, we all know that water has always lost money. So if water is losing money, then they're never going to have the money to fund their own payroll or to pay their own expenses. Yeah. So who comes? Well, the general fund's covering it anyways. Water, sewer, and sanitation, though, are enterprise funds, so we want to try to keep it among those three because it costs money to make water. Mm -hmm. Okay. The general fund, their primary money comes from property tax. If you don't pay your property tax bill, it's not costing the city anything. We're not starting up the water plant. We're not putting chemicals in it. It's just sitting there. So it, they're two totally different animals from an accounting standpoint. Yes, there has been many times that the general fund has given money to water for their payroll. Okay? But it's frowned upon. Mm -hmm. But, I mean, we do the best that we can. Um, but water will never have the funds... Until we raise rates, uh, we make water more efficiently, we change something. So therefore, someone has to assist water. And that's just the one example. The other scenario that we just had that was quite large was regional wastewater's invoices. And we were behind. And we actually have an account called the uh, Occupational Tax Sinking Fund. We emptied that account and paid every bit of those funds, which is basically rainy day, ice storm type scenario. We emptied that account and gave that in lieu of the original wastewater invoices. Okay, so that's a piece of this. We are now building that account back up for those rainy days. Um, but the way occupation taxes was set up was that the, unless it is basically administrative things like the payroll for, to run occupational tax, office supplies. Other than that, no funds are spent on occupational tax until it comes through the council. Mm -hmm. Now the other accounts are set up that way. Okay, So every time basically the occupational taxes funds have been used, it's done from a council member making a motion for a loan. So when it loaned money to water, how will water ever pay them back? Mm -hmm. I mean that that's the problem. Are there are there accounting principles that you have to follow that require you to separate each payroll account by the the activity it's in? Like what why can't all the personnel come out of personnel in general administration mm -hmm. and pay, you know, the and all of the other costs too? And, I mean, I know it can be done because then the whatever account numbers decide, decide that particular position, you would know which account it came out of. Okay. Would that solve any of the problems? It wouldn't be according to GAP. Who? The GA, GASB, because the enterprise funds, which is water, sewer, and sanitation, you cannot do that. The labor that is in those type funds is handled differently than the labor that's in the general fund. 
So, because at the end of the day, it's, it's basically three businesses. Okay. That's water. And, and if you do not put the, their payroll into water, you don't have an accurate financial statement. But you can put their payroll I don't, I don't, numbers into the financial I don't financial think you would statement. be able to do things like set water rates and sewer rates and sanitation rates until you knew what the actual cost was and what the actual revenue mm -hmm. was for each one of those yeah. departments. Right. You know. But I'm saying your payroll account out of the general fund could be set up in a way that you could pick out those payroll costs. To associate with all of these funds. Yeah. yeah. But why not just take the money that's, that's needed for the short accounts, the accounts that are short, why not just take it out of occupational tax and, and do the paying right there and still leave your all your accounting the way it's already set up, leave it like it is and just get the money over here to take care of shortfalls. I think it, I, th I kind of agree. I think that makes more sense to do that because if we're ever questioned, hey, why are you raising rates? You can basically say, hey, look, this is our total operating expense, yeah. and although we're not meeting it, we are. You know, we have to when, take a rate increase. Uh, when I first came, all the costs that were associated with sewer were not actually going into sewer, and it made it really difficult. And the guy sitting next to me was a council member, and he actually made that motion that we would put all the expenses in sewer into sewer mm -hmm. so that we would really know where we are because unless you do that there's no way for you to know if you're making money or losing money so because at that time pretty much all the costs for sewer and water was running through the water account because the thought was is well we're not making enough to cover sewer anyway so let's go ahead and run it through so george came up with the idea says well, let's let's put what, sewer expenses what you'd have to do maribel is do that every month Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. Well, I understand just, that. Yeah. It's all right, but, it, you know, it just, I think we just create just a little extra work, you know, to, to bring, to divide up the payroll, you know, into each account each month and to see where you stand. But, but, but don't misunderstand. It's not just payroll. If, if they went out and bought a $7,000, uh, Sewer pump. Majority goes to the sewer account. I right. understand that. But, but no, I mean, and then sewer doesn't have the money to pay for it. Okay? Uh huh. Then someone has to put the cash into the sewer account for that check to flare. Whether, and that would be on that given day, would be whoever had the funds. And there's, like, if you were to look at the cash balances that's on that piece of paper versus that's like a few moments ago compared to what they were when we did the bank reconciliation, there, there's a huge variance. So, um, so that seven thousand dollar sewer pump, someone has to give the funds in order for that to be paid, and either that's going to be set up as a loan, or we don't pay the bill. Mm -hmm. So it sits there until they have the funds. So for the budget next year, there's how do you fix the problem? But then there's how do you prevent the problem? Right. So how do you prevent the problem for the budget next year? Do you just... I think you quit calling it loans for one thing. You just call it a transfer. And just approve the transfers? Yeah. yeah. And okay. don't expect it to be paid back and show up as a as a debit on, on these different accounts, you know, where it shows up as an asset over here. I mean... Right now, you're... I think when we did the last water increase... You're looking at probably what twenty to twenty-five thousand loss every month in water. Before the increase, yeah. and we were able to tighten that gap a little bit, but it was just going to be way too high of an increase. Well, yeah, in part of it's the, the city's problem. Like we we have issues with water, and we don't have enough people in the community that are offsetting the cost of the system. Like if we had more people here, we could then use offset water, some of that. So the, the basic. Like uh, payroll would be dispersed <coughs> over more people. Exactly. You know? Yeah. So the idea is the more growth you can get in the city, exactly. obviously you can use more water, sell more water. But if we know, like, water companies. like we know at the beginning of the year, hey, we're gonna if we're losing twenty five thousand, we should just plan on moving twenty five thousand to those counts on a regular basis. 
you know, well, because we're doing it anyways, and it's not alone. It's part of the way the city's going. That brings up another point. Um, and the prior council had said that occupational tax would give $6,500 to water every single month until new water rates were put in place, okay? So we did that. And then the new water rates kicked in. We stopped the 6500 transfer each month. Also, there was a motion made that we would have approximately $50,000 from occupational tax for infrastructure items that would be water and sewer, okay? That all ended, actually, I think that we went through that um, at the end of, this is, we went through the end of that of, of April. So there is no more funds, and that's one thing that was learn, learning the mayor about was because you've had $6,500 to assist in water every single month. That's gone. You had an extra, approximately fifty thousand dollars sitting there for any infrastructure. For example, the seventy-seven thousand dollars they pump. Now all that's gone. So there's nothing assisting water. Mm -hmm. Yet we do know for a fact water is going to lose money, and is losing money. So how do we cover those expenses? <coughs> we can either set that up as a loan, or we can have a motion that we will transfer uh, the funds to it. In other words, what needs to be done to immediately is help this problem is you need a motion that we stop calling it a loan and give Lisa the ability to transfer those funds over to the needy account. Yes. Yeah. In, in the motions we make, we cannot call it a loan. No. We will just no. transfer the funds. Right. For, for example, you if you to buy a new fire truck. <clears throat> and you wanted to loan the money to them to do that. That's that's one of these that's set up. Mm -hmm. Then that would not be, in the motion, we wouldn't call it a loan. Yeah. Occupational tax would give. That's something that we could, going forward. But well, we going forward, we don't want to call anything a loan, loan that's an interagency transfer. Right. right. So loans that should go off of a pay period. And what about... These will over a period of time, real gradually move the out other. some of these things yes. that are called loans. Okay. Paid. Yeah. So does the loan have to be paid back from an accounting standpoint? Yes. It does unless there's a motion that the council forgives it. Yeah. Okay. That's where we're at right now. Because we the need loans have gotten to such an extent. For example, like I said, there's $1.783 million that's so due the, the general fund right is now. Is there a list of the loans that are on the book and then a recommendation mm -hmm. on? There's $132,000 that, that were added to it from July 18 to June, actually till today. And that's broken down to $97,000 of it went to water and $35,000 of it went to cemetery. Because cemetery will never sell enough lots, plots, and we hope that it doesn't to cover the expenses. It looks like all that or be under general fund in place that doesn't have it enough to generate their own money. Yeah, you know, it's better just keeping up with, you know, you what are the separate, but you know it's coming yeah. out of general funds. That's where it's coming from. Anyway. Yeah. So are we are we better just to inflate the? Amount coming out of general fund, so an example would be twenty five thousand dollars for water. You know what? We're going to move thirty thousand dollars into the water account every month, and it's going to start to generate the money to pay back the loan. Or what's well, what's the recommendation? I'd rather I'd rather not do it on a routine basis. I'd rather just do it as needed. Okay. That way we can keep a better understanding of just how much. What is it costing us? Where can we? How can we make this better? You know, uh, how can we cut back on our expenses? Uh, um, you know, if you just transfer automatically, then you won't know about your rates. You know, whether I mean, it kind of skews everything to you know to a false report type mm -hmm. setting. I mean, just so from the way the city's going to operate, then they would monitor those. Hey, we transferred twenty-five thousand. We transferred thirty. We transferred forty. Are we getting better? Are we getting worse? And what are the things that they need to do to try to improve upon that? Well, like, are, is that visibility going to be there so that those groups work on improving the systems rather than okay. just yeah, accepting she, it? She so. does have these transfers here, but they're listed as loans. You know, mm -hmm. 
There is a transfer account and there are loan accounts. Okay. To answer your question. Okay. So there's so, visibility and in fact, to that. You can see it on the budget. Right. You can see where okay. occupational tax is transferring out. You can see where cemetery is being transferred in as a revenue, the amount for the mowing. Mm -hmm. okay. So there, there are those accounts. It's just mainly what will we do right now with what we have on the books? And you cannot, if you were to clean this up for the general fund, when he comes back in here the next time for the audit, if I clean up that $1.7 I understand the general fund just lost $1.7 million. No one wants that. Mm -hmm. That's why there had to be probably eight, at least eight to ten years smoothing of some of this. We could maybe do occupational tax for $400,000. Mm -hmm. But that's probably all we would need to do in this year. And then next year which is in three or four days, then we could hit another piece. Mm -hmm. But I can't do any of that if I don't have a motion to do that because they are true loans until the council forgives it. And this isn't something that happened in any... Well, State well, loan council. Yeah. 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 All right, you want a mo loan, uh, motion? That's what you want, the motion to forgive the loan. Mm -hmm. Right. I would to forgive over loan. a period of time. Yeah, I would yeah. feel more over. comfortable seeing a forgiveness schedule. Yeah. I know it's a lot, right? So it's like, hey, this is what we plan this time before I approved anything. Well, what about this? Since we're within just a few days and tomorrow's Friday and the last working day of the year, would anyone be could, Willing to make a motion to just forgive the occupational tax, which is four hundred eighty-three, eighty-four thousand dollars. If so, that chunk could be in this physical year, because then you're only going to be able to do a similar amount, probably from another account, in the next year. So you're feeling, you're thinking that we would do around four hundred thousand dollars a year until we get to that point. I don't know what the magic number is. All I'm saying is I know that it, tomorrow's the last working day, yeah. and if I could get some of it in this fiscal year, it would help smoothing a little mm -hmm. bit. That's the only reason that I'm... And it doesn't have to be okay, that. I don't think the next one would be 400000 I think it would be more like it could be, it, 100000 something like that. It but. could be whatever it is you all agree upon. Yeah. I would like the motion that we forgive the occupational tax loan of 400 whatever thousand it is. I'll second it. Okay, is there any more discussion regarding that? <laughs> <laughs> no. We're not exactly following Robert's rules of order, but that's, <laughs> we can talk it out before we know how we're going to make a motion. No, if there's no more discussion, if you're in favor of doing that for right now, just, okay, thank you. Okay. Uh, following your kids' money, you can never get it back. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's right. I <laughs> And what, what they say, don't loan anything, any money if, you're, if you can't stand to lose it yeah. or something like that. Well, you know, it's just the dilemma we face. Uh, hopefully, the tax base is going to increase. Uh, of course, that means we'll have to adjust our tax rate. So, but. Uh, You know, four percent increase every year in our revenue may help over a period of next ten years. <laughs> we just need more people. Well, yeah, <laughs> long after I'm gone. All right. Um, I got one more thing, and that was uh, our siren. I don't know if you noticed in the financials but we our siren up here we've got a couple of sirens and this one up here on top of the old fire station is the one that covers you know the western part of the city uh, became non-functional and so they had a uh, fire siren or siren company come through and do the whole county and ours was included in that. It cost us $900, I believe. 
for them to... Actually, what happened was they took the old siren down and Beaver Dam had one that they weren't using. They had taken down. Uh, went, they went to a solar power one. And so we have Beaver Dams right now that's on loan to us till they need it. <laughs> mm. <laughs> it's working. Nobody ever said anything about the test on Friday. Nobody ever noticed it wasn't blowing, I guess. Or So anyway, uh, I'm going to look into rewiring. That's what the problem is with this one. They just have to rewire the motor that generates the movement. And uh, I think it's a seven, seven and a half horse engine or motor on the engine. And so uh, I'm going to look into getting it rewired so that we have that one. We've actually been... I think Charlie Shields was going to include us in a grant request to get a a new siren here. But uh, I don't know how that's going to turn out. But anyway, if I can get this old one repaired uh, for a nominal amount, get it rewired and everything, then we'll have it available to us to use still. So. But that's, if you go around behind, go out beside the library and right there at the corner of the old fire station, you'll see our old siren sitting there on the ground. So, anyway, <laughs> that was you quite a trip. If somebody hadn't hauled it off for scrap metal. <laughs> well, it takes, it takes a pretty good truck to, to get that thing picked up. Cause it's, if it can be done, you might it's, figure out how to do it. It's anyway. heavy, it's heavy. <laughs> Of course, that seven horse engine or motor sitting on it uh, adds a little bit to the weight of it. So, anyway, that's where we stand on that. I just it was in the uh, general fund report this time. I think it's nine hundred dollars. But all right, uh, anybody else have anything that you want to bring up? I was in here Tuesday afternoon to pick up the minutes. Are they? agenda and things. I was talking to Sarah on Tuesday and we had this big long discussion over water bills and how long to give people. She had 86 calls to make to tell people their water was going to be cut off. Just as a courtesy call? As a courtesy call. That does not account for her getting it all lined up and getting it to the people that need to get it to cut it off, or the people calling back and saying, oh, I just forgot. Like that would make a difference. But that's worth noting that that girl made 86 calls in seven hours and did everything else she had to do. They're the same people over and over and over again. A lot of our problem is we've got wrong numbers, we've got missing numbers, we've got people who don't have answering machines, uh, you know, to leave a message, or the answer machine's full, or uh, so. I've told them. I said the ones that are consistently on the cutoff list don't worry too much about them, but there are some legitimate people right. that. Just for one reason or another, we had one man was on vacation out in California, had been out there for a month, and on vacation, uh, you know, some people that uh, made a payment, but it was only a partial payment, you know, they were short 10 or 11 dollars, you know, you had to turn somebody off for that, so we tried to make an effort to reach them. And but the ones at seventy to a hundred dollars, one hundred fifty dollars that are consistently, you know, we're used to it. So we just <laughs> pretty well go with the flow with them. So, but it was. I mean, when you talk about eighty-six people, this is what it looks like. Mm -hmm.
where are you at on the, the sewer meter? Do what? Uh, he hasn't uh, called me back. Uh, the plans are that uh, you know they're they're going. He's he's putting it together. He just had called me, told me how far along he is, or anything like that. I did get a call <laughs> today from the engineer who's redoing our water a water tank. It looks like it's going to be somewhere in that vicinity, about three hundred thousand. He sent a preliminary engineering report to me tomorrow. He said uh, we don't really have, we won't be able to submit it to the Grad Water Management Council, which has to approve it before we send on to the Infrastructure Authority. Um, and they don't meet again until September. So. Hopefully, he's got to, he's got to take it to the Division of Water to get their approval first before we'll take it over there and get the approval for the loan or the grant. Uh, the grant's about a 50-50 grant. You know, they'll grant us 50% of it. So that leaves us about 150000 Have to, we'll just take out a short-term loan and pay it back, you know, out of occupational tax over a period of months or a year. That will help on some water problems too. Yeah, it will. Uh, our last <coughs> report, we were, like for one of the byproducts, and I get them confused, I think it's the HAA5, your, the limit is like .06. Our test came back 0.061 and 0.06. I can't remember two nine or something like that. So they're just barely over, yeah. and which is good. Uh, but still, you have to notify everybody. Yeah. And it goes on the record. Yeah, it does. Of course, we average it out over a year's yeah. time, so we've had some good low ones. So I think over. The average over the year is going to be below what Good. I think so. But in regard to your statement question, I'm going to call it. I'll call it tomorrow because I aim to today. And, and, uh, well, I was just looking at the reports. Yeah. It, there's no rhyme or reason. We've had so much rain, and it, it just doesn't make any sense. That thing save us a bunch of money, wouldn't it? If it, if, I don't know, but I mean, it. it's just. It'd be nice to know. Yeah. Uh -huh. It would be nice to know exactly what's going. Well, I think, you know, once we put it in there and we know exactly what we're sending them, mm -hmm. uh, you know, there's no way that they should be able to charge us any more than what we're sending them. You know, we they have more than their meter, it's because of I and I and their line, mm -hmm. you know, which is, it's hard to argue against. If it comes out against us that we're sending them less than what they said, we won't even mention that, will we? Well, we're Somewhere. sending them less than what they said, hopefully, you know. Yeah. Uh, but anyway, I think that'll play for itself in a relatively short time. I haven't talked to him about, lately about the estimate, but it was up in that forty-five, forty-six thousand dollars what he estimated after determining, after finding out that there was a preformed, you know, box that you could put in the ground, the electronics, their their fee for doing it, and everything. He thought about forty six thousand. So it should pay for itself pretty quick. But I'll call I'll call Steve tomorrow. Anybody else have anything? If not, I'll entertain a motion to adjourn. I make a motion to adjourn. Second. Second. Take your picture. All in favor. Thank you. Okay. Thank you all. <laughs>